Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Jaya Gopi Janabalaba Girivaradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Mad Dava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Giribaradhari Jaya Gopi Jana Balaba Giribaradhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Om Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Pari Braja Kacharya Stota Rasata Sri Sri Madhe Sri Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai Nama Chaja Sila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Pramsika Ho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindaban Mathura Dham Ki Jai Navadip Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees Bhagavad Gita Chapter 3 Verse 42 Indriyani parani ahur indrayebhya paramanaha manasastu parabuddhir yo buddhe pranat praratastu sa indriyani parani ahur indrayebhya paramanaha Manasa tu para budhir, yo budde paratastusa. Indriyani paranyahur, indriyebhya paramanaha. Manasas tu para budhir, yo budde paratastusa. Indriyani senses. Parani superior. Ahu is said. Indriyebhya 
more than the senses, param superior, mana the mind, manasaha more than the mind, tu also, para superior, buddhi intelligence, ya one who which, one which, buddhe more than the intelligence, parataha superior, tu but sa he translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind he is higher than the senses. Intelligence is still higher than the mind. And he, the soul, is ever higher than the intelligence. Purport. The senses are different outlets for the activities of lust. Lust is reserved within the body, but it is given vent through the senses. Therefore, the senses are superior to the body as a whole. These outlets, are, these outlets are not in use when there is a superior consciousness or Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness, the soul makes direct connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, the bodily functions as described here ultimately end in the Supreme Soul. Bodily action means the functions of the senses and stopping the senses means stopping all bodily actions. But since the mind is active, then even though the body may be silent and at rest, the mind will still act as it does during dreaming. But above all, above the mind, there is a determination of the intelligence. And above the intelligence is the soul proper. If, therefore, the soul is directly engaged with the Supreme, naturally all other subordinates, namely the intelligence, mind and the senses, all will be automatically engaged. In the Katha Upanishad, there is a passage in which it is said that the objects of the sense gratification are superior to the senses and mind is superior to the sense objects. If, therefore, the mind is directly engaged in the service of the Lord cons constantly, then there is no chance of the senses becoming engaged in other ways. This mental attitude has already been explained. If the mind is engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is no chance of it being engaged in the lower propensities. In the Katha Upanishads, the soul has been described as Mahan, the Great. Therefore, the soul is above all, namely the sense objects, the senses, the mind and the intelligence. Therefore, directly understanding the constitutional position of the soul or the solution of the whole problem. Sorry. Directly understanding the constitutional position of the senses is the solution of the whole problem. With intelligence, one has to seek out the constitutional position of the soul, then engage the mind always in Krishna consciousness. That solves the whole problem. A neophyte spiritualist is generally advised to keep aloof from the objects of the senses. One has to strengthen the mind by use of the intelligence. If by the intelligence one engages one mind in Krishna consciousness by complete surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then automatically the mind becomes stronger. And even though the senses are very strong, like serpents, they will be no more effective than serpents with broken fangs. But even though the soul is the master of intelligence and mind, and the senses also, still, unless it is strengthened by the association with Krishna, in Krishna consciousness, there is every chance of falling down due to the agitated mind. Indriyani parani ha hur, indriyebhya param manaha, manasastu para buddhir, yo, badde, yo buddhe, Paratas to Sa.
So Krishna is concluding this third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita by repeating the basic lesson of the nature of the soul. The soul is eternally Satchit Ananda, full of knowledge, full of bliss, and full of eternity. But when it identifies with matter, it forgets its eternal spiritual blissful nature and becomes conditioned by the power of the material modes. That's what happened with Arjuna. He became conditioned by his attachment to the senses. And his senses were, he was attached to his senses, and the senses were attached to his family members, to his material position. Therefore, Krishna said, control your senses by using your intelligence, and then you'll be able to understand that you are not eternally connected with the material world, that your family, community, and friends are only of temporary importance, but your real connection is with me, is with the super soul. Now, we may not have great intelligence. In fact, we don't, because if we had good intelligence, we wouldn't have come to the material world in the first place. The reason we are in the material world is because our intelligence has become corrupted by the senses. The senses, they uh, are connected to the object of the senses. For example, uh, from the, the sense of sight, there is form. Sense of smell, there is perfume. Sense of taste, there is food. So they are connected. The senses are connected to the sense objects. And the mind accepts or rejects the wandering of the senses over the sense objects. For example, I may be walking in a, in a, in a departmental store and my, my eyes may see some desirable object, say an expensive watch, and uh, I may desire to have it, but the intelligence that evaluates that the watch is too expensive, you cannot afford it at this time, leave it alone. So the senses accept, the, the mind accepts and rejects. And the mind accepts and rejects based on the intelligence. It's the intelligence that says that this object is not useful for you, that this object is too expensive, that you cannot afford it, let it go. Or sometimes the, the, the senses and the mind, they become confused by lust, they want to become engaged in some activity, in some affair, and the mind prevents. The mind wants to accept, but the intelligence prevents such lasting activity because it brings us into difficulty. It's just like, uh, how does a devotee control his lust? How does a devotee control his need for sex? He controls it by using proper intelligence. Uh, it's not that the devotee senses are dead. It's not that the devotee is free from the desire for sex or the desire for lust. He is, that is there. But that desire is subjugated by the intelligence. For example, I may see a beautiful woman and want to enjoy with her. Or if you're a woman, you may see a wonderful boy and want to enjoy with him. But the intelligence says, actually, this woman is not your property. This boy that you're seeing, you're just seeing the body. Within this body of this woman and the body of this boy, there is a spirit soul. That spirit soul is energy of God. It is meant for the enjoyment of God. It is not your property. You have no right to take this. If you want to actually, uh, if you actually want to be in a, in a true state, in an enjoyable state, you will try your best to bring that soul within that woman's body or boy's body towards Krishna. You will help him to make spiritual advancement. And that will give you much more pleasure than if you try to exploit him or to use him for your own sense gratification. Therefore, a devotee is able to, to channel, is able to sublimate his sexual desire by the use of proper intelligence. Now, because our intelligence has become defective with the connection of the material modes of nature, with the connection of ignorance and passion 
and even a desire for goodness because our intelligence has become absorbed in the senses and in illusion, we have to take some pure intelligence from Krishna. And the Bhagavad Gita is nothing but Krishna's intelligence that we can use to come to the transcendental platform. So this discussion about from Krishna about controlling the senses is very, very important because by controlling the senses, we can come to understand that we are spirit soul. Not just in theory, but in practice. Many, many, many transcendentalists, they understand that they are not the body, but it is theoretical. When actually one comes into full sense control, then he is able to understand, not only understand his spiritual nature, but he is able to actually practice it. It's just like, suppose I'm driving in a motor car. Now, in theory, I know the motor car is not me. It is simply a vehicle which is moving me from point A to point B. And as long as I'm in control of the car, then I'm in control. I'm peaceful. But if there is an accident, if the car goes out of control at high speed, suppose there is a tire blowout or some accident and the car begins to spin out of control, then there is universal panic. The theoretical understanding is out of the window. You simply hold on for the inevit inevitable crash. And this is what this material body is. It is a crash in slow motion happening again and again and again because we are not in control. Once we become in control of the body by controlling the senses, we understand who we are, then we become qualified to connect with Krishna. And when we connect with Krishna, then a whole new experience takes place. That experience of awakening who we really are. One of the uh, major events in a devotee's life is when uh, he actually comes to understand his eternal relationship with Krishna. He may not be free from material desire, he may not be free of the karmic laws, but simply by understanding, Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit, Nitya Krishna Das, and the eternal servant of Krishna. Simply by understanding these two things, one becomes free from the entanglement of material life. One becomes uh, in control. He's still in the motor car. He's still in the body. And the body is moving here and there. The body gets old. The body dies. He may get another body. But if he's in control, then he never forgets his relationship with Krishna. Even within the womb, he will remember. Like Bhaktivinoda explains, he has a, Bhaktivinoda wrote a very beautiful song called Jiv Jago. Jiva means the soul and Jago means to wake up. Jiv Jago, Jig Javo, Jig Jago, Gora Chanda Bole. That Gora Chanda, Lord Chaitanya, is calling out, wake up, wake up. Koto Nidra Jao Maya Pisha Chira Kole. How long will you stay on the Kole, on the lap of the Pisha Chira, the, the witch of Maya? Bhajibo Boliya Eshe Samsare Bitore. I, when I was within the womb, I promised you that I would worship you once I take birth. Bhajibo Boliya Eshe, that once I come into this take birth, Bhajibo, I will worship you. Bhuliya Rohile Tumi Avidyara Bore. Unfortunately, after taking birth, I became free from that consciousness. I became under illusion and I forgot to worship you because the experience of birth is so traumatic that even though before birth the living entity is conscious and is promising to Krishna that let me out of this womb, I will worship you, I understand my relationship with you, even though the living entity is able to get to that point, the birth trauma is so extensive that he forgets everything. It's just like uh, a person who has experienced a tremendous trauma, that trauma can cause uh, can cause uh, him forgetting, can cause amnesia. One of the causes of, of amnesia, of forgetting who we are and what is our 
identity is trauma, great trauma. So, this simple, practical, points of understanding are given by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita and it's actually very very simple when Arjuna was full of misery full of lamentation full of pain and he prayed to Krishna uh, prayed to Krishna that karpanya dosha pata swabhava that my swabhava my nature it has become karpanya it has become very small it has become condensed Doshopata, because it is it was conditioned, it is being conditioned by misery. My real nature has become conditioned by my miserable situation in, the, in this on this battlefield. Prichami Twam Dharma Samuda Chetaha. I'm asking you to to free me, to help me in this Dharma Samuda Chetaha, to help me transcend this cheta, this consciousness, which is dharma samuda, which is vitiating, which is destroying my real duty. Uh, I, be, I will become your disciple. Please instruct me. Becoming a disciple of Krishna means to take Krishna's intelligence and use it instead of your own intelligence. And by using Krishna's intelligence, we can easily control the senses. We can easily overcome the identity of the body. We can easily come under control. So, Asochan and Vasocha Stwam Pragnevadam Stabasa said. This is what Krishna told Arjuna that you speaking learned words, but actually, what you are speaking is illusion. Asochan and Vasocha Stwam. Pragna Vadams Chabasa say. Pragna Vadams means learned words. Pragna means full of meaning, uh, with 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 weight and with and with uh, and with with understanding. Pragna full. Vadams means words. Pragna Vadams Chabasa say. You are speaking these learned words, but Asochan and Vasocha Stwam. You Twam. Asochan, you are lamenting for something which is anvasocha, which is not meant to be lamented about. What is that? This is this material body. This motoka, this yantra, this machine in which we are sitting, which is a temporary situation. It will be destroyed sooner or later. There is no point lamenting. Gathasum agathasum cha nanu so chanti panditaha. One who is a pandita, one who actually speaks, properly, he doesn't lament for the coming and going of the body. He doesn't lament for the temporary situation. You want to lament, lament for the loss of your soul. Even Jesus, he, he made a very profound pronouncement. What is the use of gaining the whole world if you lose your immortal soul? This human body is so is so useful. It is actually meant for us to understand our spiritual nature. Animals cannot understand. The life of an animal is obtained by misusing the life in a human body. If you use the human body simply for eating, sleeping, having sex, defending a situation, if you use your body only for sense gratification, you do not need a human body to satisfy those senses. To satisfy your needs, you can do it just as easily, if better, in an animal body. And once you take an animal body, you, once you get demoted in the scale of evolution down to animal life, you have to go through step by step before coming back to the human life. It's just like in the military. Suppose you're an officer, a captain, and you do something wrong, and you get busted, you get, you get degraded down to private, you don't come back to captain right away. You have to become a corporal, then a sergeant, then a lieutenant, and then a captain. You have to go through the steps. So in the same way, in the 
situation of birth and death, once we lose the human form of life, we come down to the animal life. So don't, right now, 99.9% .9 of humanity on this planet are guaranteed an animal life in the next birth because they are not interested in spirituality. They are simply interested in their own sense gratification. And therefore they fight with one another. They fight for what? They fight for Krishna's property. In effect, everybody is a thief. Nothing belongs to us. We created nothing. We take nothing with us. We, naked we come, naked we go. But while we hear, oh, this is my country, I'm American, I'm Russian, I am English, I am German, this is my land, this is my property. This is complete illusion. Nothing is, no land, no property is yours. Everything belongs to God. We have the right, as the children of God, to use his property. Just like I have the right to use the property of my father. But I do not have the right to dispossess my brothers of their rightful property. Isha Avasham Idam Sarvam, because everything Idam Sarvam belongs to Isha, to the controller, not me, the supreme controller, God. Yet Kinchat Jagyatam Jagat, everything you see, everything you see within the world, Jagyatam Jagat, within the whole universe, it is owned and controlled by Isha, by God. Tena Tyak Tena Bhunjitaha, you have the right to take your share, Ma Grida, but Grida, the, 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 the desire, the, the greed to take others, kashas vidanam, what is another's property, you're not allowed to do. Right now, we are seeing that the whole planet is fighting for control over, over natural resources. Wars are going on, people are getting killed. Why? Because of this misconception of I and mine. And the only way to get rid of this misconception is to follow the principles of spirituality, the principles of sense control through which we can acquire proper intelligence, through which we can understand we are spirit. To control the body, to control the senses, is the gift of human life. So don't waste your time. Don't run after the rainbow at the end of the storm. It's just, there is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It is a fable. It is a myth. It is not possible to become happy in a material world. The definition of a rascal is one who wants to make the world, which is dukalayam, miserable, into sukalayam, pleasant. A rascal will think like that. That by adjustment, even though this material world is full of misery, by adjusting the situation, I will become happy. I will make my family happy. I will make my country happy. But it is not possible. It is not possible. Uh, even the great Scottish poet, Robbie Burns, he wrote a very beautiful poem uh, that uh, Ode to a Mouse. And in the poem, he said that uh, the best laid plans of mice of men have gone aglay. That whether you're a mouse in the field or whether you're a king in your kingdom, your best plans have gone aglay, have become destroyed. You cannot win over the material energy. The material world is designed to keep you in illusion. The material world is designed to take you away from your real spiritual nature. Take you away from Krishna. Therefore, let's take advantage of this Krishna Consciousness Movement, which Prabhupada has introduced. Take advantage of Srila Prabhupada's books and his instructions. Take his intelligence, and by using that intelligence, we can become free from illusion, we can understand our spiritual nature, and then automatically Krishna will arrange a situation that we will become free from the entanglement and attachments and the allurement of the illusion. Dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. Those who worship me with love and affection. 
Tesham Satata Yuktanam, constantly worship me. Bhajatam Priti Purvakam, who engage in service at my lotus feet with love and devotion. Dadami, I will give Buddhi Yogam, special intelligence. What kind of intelligence? Yenamam Upayantite, by which they can come to me. Thank you very much. So we have uh, some comments from uh, Atma Vidya, humble obeisances to the assembled Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for joining us. Mandi, Hare Krishna. Uh, Atma Vidya comments, I am convinced that our spiritual master is very pleased with your preaching. Boy, I wish I was. He wanted us to speak in this way. Your sensitive explanations, even down to the syllable, a very nice bonus. Thank you, Prabhu. Boy. I need encouragement, that's for sure. The last few days of Easter, I went uh, to the south of Holland. There is a, a, there was a small community. We met together, about 10 devotees. And we spent three days. I was able to get up early in the morning, do my puja, give Bhagavatam class. And we had seminars during the day. And we talked about the need to create a community in Holland, to get some land and live together. So let's pray to Krishna that he will grant us because, frankly, being with devotees was so wonderful, such a wonderful experience that uh, it is the key for spiritual advancement. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Khoi, Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. By associating, associating with devotees, even a little bit of association with devotees, Sarva Siddhi Hoi will give us all perfection. That was Prabhupada's great gift to us and a great loss that we don't have proper community. But we can pray to Krishna. Thank you very much. If you have any more comments, please type them in and we'll see you again on Friday. Haribo.